while we gather up, let's open our hymnals to Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. And I'm not entirely sure of the number for that hymn before we... Let's see. Take My Life, number 330. Uh, I love this hymn. At one time, we changed some of the words to it to include health ministry. Okay, number 330. Take my life and let it be. I need somebody to sing with me. <clears throat> Lord, to thee, take my hands and let them move. At the impulse of thy love, at the impulse of thy love. <clears throat> take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Always only for my King. <clears throat> Take my lips and let them Messages from me. Take my silver and my gold. Not a mite would I withhold. Not a mite would I withhold. <clears throat> Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer. Cameron. As I've been getting better acquainted with the Wick Choirs, whom you'll meet in just a few minutes again, I'm realizing that this could have easily been your theme song throughout your life. It's been beautiful getting to know them a little bit better. Um, I wanted to share just briefly what, uh, I what Victoria shared with me earlier today, but I do need my glasses. It's a short biography, and believe me, this is very short for how the Lord has used this lady. She says, God has given me so many wonderful opportunities to learn of his divine love and share that love with others. Are we having an issue? Oh, I'm sorry. My PhD is in educational leadership. I've taught nursing and administration classes for both undergraduate and graduate students at two universities. I believe one of those universities was Andrews University, am I right? My, my clinical practice as an advanced practitioner has been in obstetrics, nurse midwifery, and hospital and missions. Let me tell you, that's encompassing an awful lot. My passion has always been health ministry as it relates to the gospel of God's redemptive love for all people in all cultures. And I'm currently the director for our health ministry department at the Meldrum Seventh-day Adventist Church, a role I've enjoyed for nine years. So we have been sharing together, haven't we, over the past year or so. Uh, Dr. Eddie Ramirez, whom you remember, gave one of our lectures here. She uh, had his services as well on Sabbath, and we got him on Sunday, and we were very pleased to be able to share those expenses. So it's been fun working with her. Um, in addition to what she has done right here in the United States, she and her husband have been influential around the world in helping with Adventist Frontier Missions 
And would you mind both of you coming up here just a minute and telling us just very briefly, that'll take us up till 2 o'clock, as to what you have been doing, Bruce and Victoria Wickwire. So can you tell us just a little bit about where your travels have taken you and what kind of work you've been doing outside of our United States? Uh, well, we served um, through Adventist Frontier Missions for a number of years, and um, I was both financial officer for the organization as well as um, supervising some projects overseas. Most of those were in very varied parts of the world. Western China was one of them, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Albania, Ireland. So very, very different cultures very different in different places. But we had some marvelous missionaries that are doing a great work out there. Now, before you ended up or began working for AFM, can you just tell us briefly where you were working before that in missions? Uh, we actually lived in Appalachia in, in eastern Kentucky. A uh, very interesting culture there also. Um, a real mission from everything <laughs> I've gathered. We, <laughs> Incredible um, mission. During the time that we worked there at that hospital, I was the finance officer and uh, Victoria was both a nursing director for some departments as well as a midwife uh, during that time. But uh, I don't think there was a weekend that we didn't have gunshot wounds in our emergency room there. It was, it was called the marijuana capital of the world. And from what I gathered, the Hatfields and the McCormicks or somebody are still feuding it out. <laughs> and she had to walk down feuding lines and ask them to move and was threatened with, with her life if she didn't move. So her whole experience in the Appalachians was a far more um, rigorous one than our time spent in the Philippines or Singapore, I would suggest. <laughs> it was more of a mission field. So thank you for sharing that. And Victoria... You started out as just a little wee baby uh, with a mama who wasn't very well. And only a four-year-old and a six-year-old really had the strength to care for you. And how God led this little tiny one up through where he did to where she is today is a, st is a story that I want to see written up one day. She shared the, some of the highlights of that story with us last night, and it's just amazing. Isn't our God amazing when he can take somebody from a little tiny village in the Appalachians who's being fed, fed pop water, pop, pop, soda pop through a bottle by her siblings, and bring her to where you are today to serve and bless others. That's a journey that is a story worth hearing. I hope we have her back sometime just to hear her testimony, for God has worked miracles. Thank you for silencing your phones as we uh, dive into our lecture this afternoon. Uh, sometime back, it's only an hour that we have to share together. Some time ago, uh, Victoria called me. She said, I'm so inspired by this whole thing about food and mood, and I'd really like to get a good lecturer out here. I've been studying about it. And who can you recommend? So I recommended a couple people, and they couldn't really work out. And, and finally I said, hey, wait a minute. You've been doing all the study. Why don't you present this? You're an educator. You got your PhD in education. Why don't you do it? So she did, and her church enjoyed it. And I said, please come on up and share it with ours as well. So thank you very much for being here today, and we look forward to hearing about food and how it affects our mood and what we can do about it. Thank, Thank you, Victoria. You. Does this need to come on? Or do you uh, is this thing on? She is it on? OK. All right. Thank you so much for having me. And what a friendly, lovely church family that you all are. I've enjoyed meeting several of you in the hallways and talking in the fellowship hall. And isn't God good? all the time. He is so good. My plan this afternoon is actually, besides just fellowshipping together, is to kind of do a little spin-off of what we heard both in Sabbath school this morning, as well as Dr. George's sermon on just fellowship and togetherness and God's plan for our lives. And let me just make sure that this is coming on okay. Okay, give me just a second. 
This is Dina's computer because my new computer, when we got up this morning, it had crashed. So, <laughs> oh, it's okay. No, go ahead if you want to, it's fine. There we go, thank you. I'm gonna use, hopefully my remote will work out okay. But before we get started this afternoon, to talk about this wonderful plan that God has given us that has such a potential to positively change and affect our lives, let's have prayer together. Would that be okay? Can we do that? Dear Lord, we are just so grateful to be together as church family. We know that this wonderful plan that you've given us has such a potential, if you would just allow it to, to not only change our physical bodies, but to also change the way that our mind thinks. And dear Holy Spirit, we would just like to ask especially that you guide us today. Give us the wisdom. Open our minds and our hearts so that we can truly grasp with your wisdom what it is that God wants to share with us. And we do know, dear Lord, that the rich currents of your love can flow through us as we open our hearts to you. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So our first slide that we're looking at is actually a beautiful rainbow. And did you notice, those of you that stayed for potluck, it was like a beautiful rainbow, wasn't it? Thank all of you that put that gracious meal together. It was such a blessing. And you know, when I look at the beautiful colors, and you're looking at the beautiful colors of all the wonderful foods that God has created for us, we were meant to be in a garden. Is that right? Weren't we originally created to be in a garden? But these beautiful colors also remind me of the beautiful rainbow that's around God's throne, which really signify his wonderful promises and his love for us. So let's, let's move on here to the second slide. In this episode that we're going to be talking about this afternoon, I want to make sure that all of us come away with an un a deeper understanding of the brain and the body connection. Digestion is one of those things we don't think too much about until something goes awry. And then it's like that's all we can think about, right? So we're going to discover just some basic brain and intestines or gut or stomach, whichever word you like, that can aid digestive health while it also improves our mood and our memory in the process. So the way that we care for our bodies affects our mental health and function, including our mood, our memory, our learning, and our behavior. What often happens, and you, please, I want you to be interactive too. If you're in a hurry and you're really hungry, you're usually, if you don't have things prepared ahead of time, you're just going to grab something, right? Because you need to eat. And often, that may not be the best choice. Um, I remember, you know, when I was working on my doctorate, and one of the classes that we were required to take was the whole kind of like philosophy behind how Fortune 500 companies actually use mood to get items and food, food and mood, to get items on their agenda past. So very often these meals that they would serve during these board meetings that they would have would be high in what would you think? What would you think? Sugar. You're very smart. That, that's a great answer. So there would be things high in fat, 
high in sugar, not complex carbohydrates, but just lots of carbohydrates. And what happens when we eat those kind of foods? Anybody? You get sleepy and perhaps brain fog. And so they would have no problem whatsoever getting those important agenda items that they wanted passed, passed. And I thought, wow, that's, uh, that is so true. That's what happens. So the gut and brain connection cannot be separated. And I will share some um, quotations as well as some research as we spend our time together this afternoon. But psychiatrist Dr. John Rady states, emotion wells up from the brain and the body acting together. We cannot separate emotion from cognition or cognition from the body. And you know, for a long time, we've been, and we still are, we're blessed as a people to have the wonderful health message that we have, don't you think? Medicine for years used to liken the human body to a machine that was made up of individual parts that could be fixed or replaced when they were broken. But we know that our bodies are much more like a dynamic, interconnected ecosystem. Separating the body and the brain is rapidly coming to be seen as ridiculous. Just can't be done. Science confirms now what God's word revealed to us centuries ago. The Bible teaches that we are saved as complete whole beings. We cannot separate the physical, mental, and spiritual components. And the Lord God, he formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. God's own hands formed Adam, the father of our race, into a human being that was made after his own image of love, creativity, and care. God breathed his own breath, the vitalizing element of life, into the clay form, and man was transformed into a living, breathing, thinking, feeling, animated being. And that also makes me think of a couple of verses come to mind. Second Peter 1.3, I don't have it on my slide, but we have everything that we need to live a life that pleases God. His divine power has given to us all things, not some things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Do you agree with that? One author stated it this way, man is an, indiv man is an indivisible whole, not parts into which man may be divided. The whole man from top to bottom exists by relationship to God. God's plan for us, that plan that I first mentioned, for renewal, for restoration and recovery, involves every part of our being, physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual. And in Psalms, we're actually told that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. If you go back to the original Hebrew, wonderfully means that it was with special love and care that our Creator made us. And fearfully means we were set apart. We're unique. We're special. So God has created your brain body systems to improve with proper care, use, and exercise. Lifestyle choices such as, and you could probably repeat these back to me, diet, exercise, rest or sleep, or both, healthy relationships, and trust in God are all vitally important tools 
that profoundly affect our thinking, our mood, and our attitude, and just our overall well-being in general. And I have a question. Have any of you experienced some of those lifestyle benefits in terms of your health, your mental health, enhancing that frontal lobe that the Lord gave us? I'm seeing lots of it shaking. So one thing is sure. The way that we care for our bodies affects our ability to hear God's voice, understand, and respond to his word. Now, I want to just pause here for one second, and we'll quiz you a little bit. I have a friend that I'm really close with, and I'm ashamed to admit that I'm not always as attentive and caring to her as I should be. She's wonderful. She's always there for me. She's so non-judgmental. She does incredible things for me. The amazing things that she accomplishes on a regular basis is beyond words. I know it's awful, and I ask myself, how could I not appreciate this friend? This friend that God has given me to go out of my way to take care of her in the special ways that she does for me. Now, I want to ask each one of you, can you relate with that at all? Because this friend that I'm talking about is our human body. Did you catch it? Is that where your mind was going to? And by saying that, I'm not really referring to a number on a scale or a dress size. It's much more than that. It's appreciating what God has given us and taking care of it. There's some very interesting research that shows, and maybe some of you have read this, 91% of women in particular hate their bodies. Isn't that sad? And you know, when we don't honor what God gave us and take care of it, This precious gift that he's given us, it's where the Holy Spirit loves to dwell. When we feel bad about ourselves, how does that affect our lives? Not good, right? It affects everything that we do or say or are. And remember the gospel, what's it all about? Restoration. Restoration for us and sharing that restoration with others. So it is always, it's always important though, especially when we're making lifestyle changes that are related to behavioral psych disorders, GI issues, or serious medical conditions, you know, work with your healthcare professional. You know, that's very important. The good news is intentional, positive choices restore your brain and your body. All who concentrate body, soul, and spirit to God's service will be constantly receiving a new endowment of physical, mental, and spiritual power. Do you agree? Notice this review. Nutritional interventions may benefit psychiatric conditions and countless aspects of human well-being. Well, some friends of mine, and, and one of them, you know, you've recently met. Remember when Dr. Eddie was here? And uh, he has some fascinating information for those of you that want more on his epigenetics studies, and um, also Dr. Neil Nedley. Are any of you familiar with Dr. Nedley? He actually um, has done just an incredible amount of research on enhancing your frontal lobe. And just for fun, recently I took one of his courses on enhancing. A girlfriend and I said, okay, we're going to do this together, and that way we can just really have a fun time together. 
It was incredible what we were able to learn, just simple things that you and I can do to enhance that frontal lobe. So here's an important question. Can what you eat influence your mental function? We just had that little story. <laughs> the answer is certainly affirmative. According to experts from multiple areas of behavioral science, medicine, and lifestyle, it is definitely true. Now, we ingest each day a number of compounds that we know can alter mental function. Diet affects the structure, the function, and the metabolism of the very cells that connect your brain-body systems. And here's, here's another um, study by Dr. Baldwin. The membranes will reflect the diet by being less flexible, stiffer, and more restrictive to normal enzyme functions. And this goes back to that study that I shared with you about some of the Fortune 500 companies that actually just kind of utilize food to, to change the mood. So this means that the conductivity, the fluidity, the electricity, and the permeability of your cells are improved or impaired by our consistent daily food choices. So according to Dr. Antonio Convent at the Center for Brain Medicine in New York, we have studied the effect of insulin resistance on the pancreas, the retina, and other organs. But what about the brain? No one seems to think about the brain. Now, I've mentioned a few people that do a lot of study about the brain, but generally this has been true. Eating a high fructose added sugar diet over the long term alters your brain's ability to learn and remember information. And again, this was um, a statement that was published about another, from another brain researcher from the UCLA Department of Neurosurgery. So eating too much high fructose could block the insulin's ability to regulate how cells, how cells use and store sugar for the energy required for processing thoughts and emotions. Once our study shows that a high fructose diet harms the brain as well as the body. Research consistently links the overconsumption of added sugar to overeating, poor memory formation, learning disorders, and depression. Other investigations reveal that this type of diet also reduces levels of an important brain growth factor that's linked to learning and memory. It's, this growth factor is called BDNF, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Now, there is ways that just simple things that we can actually do to increase those factors. Any suggestions on what that might be besides obviously eating a healthy diet? Anybody have any ideas? Sleep, Sleep is critical. And what about exercise? Yes. Good. Water, yes. Water is, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk a little bit about water. So, in addition, animal saturated fat, fried foods, soft processed foods, high sugar, they all decrease brain cell growth and survival. I like to call it the chips, chops, and lollipops diet plan. These so called comfort foods are tempting, perhaps when we're feeling down we're depressed, we're anxious, we're just feeling dull. But they fuel a downward spiral that promotes fatigue, weight gain, food addictions, and disease. 
Some of the major sources of animal saturated fat include, and you probably could name them, but like red meat, chicken skin, whole fat dairy products, milk cream cheese, ice cream. Um, where I came from in Appalachia, there was a lot of lard that was actually used that you know people actually got from their animals, from the pigs. So all of these things we know can certainly not only affect our frontal lobe, but our digestive system as well. And one thing, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe a lot of you know this, but the same chemicals that are in your brain are also in your digestive system. So that's something you know, to think about. So according to acclaimed author and dietitian Elizabeth Sommer, repeated poor food choices can set fundamental patterns in the production of the brain chemicals that regulate appetite and mood. So that you become a victim of mood swings, food cravings, poor sleep habits, and other emotional problems because of poor eating habits. Now I'm gonna mention this again, that Dr. Neil Nedley, he speaks at many different psych behavioral conferences, and he's actually, he was sharing recently that a lot of the um, mental health associations, the big associations that you know, deal a lot with these um, behavioral psych issues are asking him to please come and speak to them because his research has just started to really change people's thinkings, especially on this one subject. There is one diet and one diet only that has found, been found to reduce anxiety and depression especially. What do you think that diet might be? What? Plant-based diet. They're so smart, Dina. <laughs> and, you know, this has not been necessarily something that most, um, you know, psychiatrists and mental health care practitioners have really thought about it. And we've actually got some fascinating research now on prisoners that have been placed on a plant-based diet. Incredible how their whole frontal lobes change and their thinking in consequence changes. So God does have a wonderful plan for us, right? So let's take just a few more moments to talk about digestion, lifestyle, and the brain. A healthy stomach is essential to keep the precise balance of chemicals for optimal mental and physical health. Even pain perception is affected by the way that we treat our digestive organs. There is a natural symphony of chemicals in the stomach region that balance our emotions, sleep, pain, and energy. And we had talked just a, you know, a second ago about that. There is a constant exchange of chemicals and electrical messages between the nervous system and the digestive system. The entire digestive system is closely attuned to a person's emotions and state of mind. Therefore, what affects the stomach will affect what? The brain and vice versa. Fascinating. So there is more at stake in the care of our dietary and lifestyle habits than just our physical health. Your emotional as well as your physical health depends on that healthy interaction between your, your brain, your gut, your immune system, and your endocrine systems. These communication systems are constantly talking to each other via chemical messages. When one system is altered, it affects them all. Every positive choice that you make also affects all three. 
So the gut-brain connection, it's not a joke. This connection goes both ways. A troubled intestine can send signals to the brain. Healthy plant-rich foods and spacing meals out at regular times creates a powerful body-wide, multiple system-wide advantage. And a troubled brain can send signals back again to your gut. But the good news is God has engineered our brains and our bodies for renewal, recovery, and restoration over time. Good mental health practices affect physical health, and a healthy lifestyle affects our mental health and our cognitive function. From fiber, our gut flora produces short-chain fatty acids, an important energy source for the cells that line our colon. We feed our flora with fiber, and then they in turn, what? They feed us, right? They keep us healthy. When we don't eat enough whole plant foods, we are, in effect, starving our microbial selves. Had you ever thought about that? They're actually starving ourselves of important things that we need in our gut flora. There's nothing left over for the gut flora. It's all absorbed in our small intestine before it even makes it down to the colon. Not only may this mean loss of beneficial microbial metabolites, but also a loss in the beneficial microbes themselves. So there's some groundbreaking research about, that's discovering new clues about diet's relation to the gut bacteria, which influences weight, mood, and stress proneness. And we know with our Western diet, with high levels of fat and sugar, it leads to a high level of firmicutes, whereas a diet high in fiber leads to an increase in bacterial diets. Oops. Okay. So gangsters in the gut. Firmicutes versus the bacteroidites. Hmm. This isn't working. Wait a second. We're trying to get communication here between our slides. Can you go to the next slide for me? So our daily food choices make a difference. Happy gut, happy brain, right? So for good health, including mental health, the food you eat needs to be good for you and your microbia. Okay, good. So let's look at this encouraging statement from Dr. Michael Greger. Fiber is what our good bacteria thrive on. When we eat whole plant foods, we're telling our gut flora to be fruitful and multiply. Plant-based diets are associated with a healthier gut and a healthier microbiome, with a greatly reduced risk for low-grade inflammation throughout the body, including the brain. So plant nutrition helps lower one important risk factor for depression by improving gut health and providing these essential micronutrients that are vital to mental function and mood. And I wanted to just share something um, that kind of goes along with this. It's important for each of us to avoid what we call cognitive distortions. Has anybody 
Heard of that terminology? We must always tell ourselves the truth based on not what the newspaper says, not what the media says, but what God says. And he always tells us the truth. These are biblical principles that are found in God's word. With God's help, we can replace these, what I call, negative cognitive distortions. I want you to remember an acronym that I'm going to share with you. It's spelled HARP. You know, like the angels play the HARP, H-A-R-P. So in order to help yourself when these, and we all have them, we all get these um, cognitive distortions. So H, remember this, stands for hear. Listen to what you're saying to your mind. Listen to that internal dialogue and ask yourself. And that's where the A comes in, the analyze. Are there any cognitive distortions that I'm thinking right now that are just not true? And then R stands for reconstruct. Replace them by God's grace with the truth. And finally, practice, practice, practice. So have any of you ever had a situation that perhaps could create some of these um, cognitive distortions. Like, let me just share that there are three common causes of things that can trigger. And you probably will know kind of what I'm talking about. So one of them is overreacting, jumping to erroneous conclusions that are not based on reality, and then taking things personally that may not have been intended that way. All of those things can create in our heart these cognitive distortions. So for an example, let's just say you're out in your yard, you're working in your beautiful garden, and all of a sudden you, you have a little fence there and you hear your neighbor that's talking to her friend saying, I just don't like them. And you're like, is she talking about me? She doesn't like me. And that is a form of a cognitive distortion. And then you can use that acronym. Ask yourself, is it possible that they're talking about someone that has nothing to do with me? And after all, she was just talking to me yesterday and telling me how much she appreciates me sharing God's love with her. So see how you begin to kind of unpack those things and you analyze, would there be any reason that she would be saying that? And most of the time, honestly, these distortions are just not true. So that's where our practice comes in handy. So how we feel does affect how we heal. Isn't that right, Dr. George? So how about when it comes time to go to the grocery store? Do any of you go grocery shopping when you're hungry? Sometimes that just happens, doesn't it? <laughs> However, <laughs> if we create a grocery list and we stick to it, and we go shopping right after we've eaten, we may not be quite as tempted to get some of those things that honestly aren't the best for us. And this slide kind of shows um, I think sweetly, how staying in the area of the store that has healthier choices. So go veggies, focus on fresh fruit salads with lots of leafy green crunchy raw veggies. Use those whole grains instead of refined cereals and breads. And you know, our lunch today was a good example. Wow, there were so many wonderful greens, crunchy greens, and um, there was some couscous, and I missed some of it because we were trying to figure out our computer problem. But uh, good examples, great lunch, by the way. And using lemon and healthy fats like olive oil, walnuts, avocado, instead of healthy 
I'm sorry, heavy salad dressings and, um, you know, meat substitutes and things sometimes that tend to be pretty heavy in fat and salt. So these examples show us that it's important to watch for those hidden calories. The closer that we stick to the produce department, wholesome beans, unrefined grains, and nature's garden variety, the less that we really have to worry about the calories, the fat, the sugar, and the salt. So just some common sense things, really. Okay, so beware of bottles, bags, and bars. Bottles, soda pop and sweetened drinks are the number one source of added sugar, sadly, in the American diet. Just one 12 ounce can of soda. How many, how many cups of sugar do you think that would possibly add to your diet in one year? What would you think? Just call out some answers. Any, what? How many? <laughs> 75 cups of sugar. Just one 12 ounce can of soda a day. What about your bags? The small bag of chips is 275 calories. A grab bag of corn chips, you know, like the kind you can pick up, like when you're in Subway and you're like, oh, I just want a little something to go with that Subway sandwich. A whopping 420 calories, where you can eat a baked potato for 110, or a savory ear of corn is just 60 calories. What a difference in flavor, as well as what I call fill-up value. And how about those chocolate bars? Candy bars, even the ones that are called health food bars, are often rich in calories, low in fiber, and lean on appetite satisfaction. So when you take away your fiber and nutrition, of the whole plant foods, you're going to get the extra sugar, fat, and salt that we were talking about. Do you know that you could actually eat 25 carrots to get the calories in just one 8-ounce chocolate bar? Did you know that? Of course, we're not probably going to sit down and eat 25 carrots, but um, just, a, just a good comparison for our minds. There you go. <laughs> okay, calorie denser sense. So you have this one Danish, or you can have the same amount of calories by eating cantaloupe, a banana, an apple, and sorry, a half of cantaloupe, an apple, a banana, and an orange. Again, just kind of common sense, fun things to look at. So what about regularity? Do you think that would have anything to do with the story, this plan that God has given us? Frequent eating adds calories and interferes with the stomach's ability to process the next meal, causing indigestion. So regularity is important. And I know, you know, just from experience in working with my nursing students, one of the first things that we would always talk about is how important it is for them to eat breakfast. And I'm not going to ask for a show of hands how many of you eat breakfast, but I hope you are. But skipping breakfast and frequent snacking tends to increase our calorie intake and does add a lot of extra pounds. And also, frequent eating interferes with the ability of the stomach to actually process the next meal because you've still got, you know, food in there. We're actually recommended to try to have at least a five-hour break between our meals and, um, you know, not to try to drink a lot of fluid with our meals because, again, that interferes with the ability of the stomach to process the next meal. 
So try eating plenty of fiber foods only at mealtime and let your stomach rest between meals. Eat much less for your third meal. Now there's a little adage that I learned years ago, and you've probably heard it too, that eating a hearty whole grain breakfast with fresh fruit, nuts, and reducing food in the evening is a great plan. Have any of you heard that? You have a wonderful health ministry department here. I'm, I know they shared that with you. So the old adage, help me with this, eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a queen, and supper like a pauper. Wow, great job. You guys are so smart. So what about, one of you were talking about the importance of water. I think it was this couple over here. Drinking water between meals instead of taking a lot of fluid with meals leaves room for healthy choices and actually will improve your digestive activity. So remember, mood meals and motility. Emotional health is strongly linked with digestive health. Chronic stress, anxiety, and depression cause many stomach ailments. I just had a very dear friend that was actually diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And um, it's, it's been heartbreaking for all of us. And I know that she has struggled, you know, a lot with trying to break away from her, you know, patterns of growing up the way that she was eating. And, um, you know, you want to make these choices, all of us, right, before something critical like that, you know, happens. So it takes time and perseverance to recover lost ground and form healthy habits. But God will give you the guidance, the power, and the will to stick with it. So our thoughts and our attitudes are the raw materials for our actions. We must expect challenges. Successful people are not mistake-free. They just refuse to give up. You know, I was very, very close to a dearly beloved family member who had a very difficult time dealing with her traumatic past. The toxic past that she'd went through, which was horrific, seemed to define all of her decision-making, and it was heartbreaking. But God wants to recycle that trauma. He can actually turn our trauma into a window that we can use to share with others and to share his love. When we allow God to blend our minds with the mind of Christ, our day will automatically be powered up. Everything the world desires to bestow upon us, Christ will make it up to us and help us to glorify him and love others. And I just want to say, you have a very loving, friendly church family. You are blessed, for sure. And you know, your church, this very venue, can be the most powerful venue for helping others to feel loved and validated. I have a friend that is a traumatic counselor, and one of the things that she says all the time is your church is the best, the very best psych behavioral center in the world. Do you like that? And I think she's right. So, attitude is everything. Be determined to grow, to say yes to God, to truth, to positive change. A growth mindset allows you to thrive during challenging times in your life. It allows you to learn 
in the life lessons that God brings our way, our relationships, our work, and our personal growth. His plan really is the best. So don't let yesterday's reason become today's excuse. You may have some things in your past that has driven some of your choices, but you can have a very bright future by God's grace. It all depends on attitude. Jesus gave himself a living sacrifice to make our life new. He calls us to give ourselves to him so that he can renew our mind, our heart, and our habits for good. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Remember to take care of the body that God has given you by his help. Forming healthy relationships, daily exercise, regular hours for sleep and rest, and meals rich in stress, busting antioxidants and nutrients are essential for making good decisions in the good times and maybe the bad. Wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And that's from Romans 12, 1 and 2. There is a time and season for all things, a divine purpose for every stage of life. It's never too late to bring balance, belief, and new behavior into your life. It's never too late to walk more closely in harmony with the principles that God created to build and bless our minds and bodies. And how would you all like to reclaim three months of your life in a year. That would be something, right? Because time is such a valuable resource that God gives us. Well, I was looking at some research. I don't have it on my slide, but I wanted to share it with you. That one way that we can reclaim or reboot our lives is to take a break from mindless TV watching Videos that don't follow Philippians 4a, what is that? Whatever is true, honest, just, noble, pure, and lovely, fill your mind with these things. Scrolling through social media, all of these things, according to this research, and, it, and again, it's common sense, easily you could get three months back on your life. So there is something very special about reclaimed time. Time is a valuable gift. One of the things that is recommended is that all of us participate in what we call three-dimensional activities. Dina and I were actually working in her garden yesterday, and that is definitely a very healthy three-dimensional activity. So what do I mean by three-dimensional as opposed to just spending hours on social media. Isn't it easy to, to go on Facebook and you're reading through all this and all of a sudden you're like, oh my, where did the time go? And so doing these three-dimensional things, washing dishes, cleaning the house, going for a walk, exercising, anything that requires your senses, your hands, and what else? Your mind, right, are healthy, wonderful choices. And remember, we were meant to be in a garden anyway. So he wants to calm our life storms, but he will not force an entrance, dear sisters and brothers, into your life. The invitation is his, but the decision is ours. Will you accept his gracious invitation now? Will you receive his principles for better digest, digestive and mental health habits, for spiritual health and eternal life? I will come into him and dine with him 
and he with me, Revelation 3.20. In the same way that eating good food at regular intervals eases digestion ailments, feeding on the word of God every day helps smooth out our paths and it connects us with the source of eternal life. Eating good food in regular patterns aids the digestive health, but feeding on his word, staying connected by his grace to the vine, our creator, he does have a wonderful plan. So all of us are invited. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, the invitation is now. His invitation is gracious. He wants to fill your life, each of you, with mercy, love, and truth. And I just want to close by oops, a little statement that touched my heart, and I hope it does yours too. It says, faith goes up the stairs that God's love has built. And it helps us open the window and see the hope, the love, the promises that he has given us, our creator, in his precious word. May God bless each of you. And thank you again for the opportunity to be with you. so much, Victoria. That was a good reminder, right? I have a book to recommend to you. I've shared it with so many people because it underscores exactly what we've been talking about here in very practical terms. It's called Fiber Fueled. Fiber Fueled. F-U-E-L-E-D. Uh, that book is going to introduce you to how to develop gut health in ways you may never have thought about before. So strongly encourage you to go online, pick up the book. It's worth every dime, fiber-fueled, Bolshevich or something. The last name is an unpronounceable for me. <laughs> but our guts really do have their own brain, and they're telling our brain what to think and how to think. And the brain is telling our gut how to think. So the combination up and down there is just incredibly important. And... As we heard this morning, the whole thing about health is to improve what's right behind this frontal lobe, or your frontal lobe, right behind the bone here in your head. That is where the Holy Spirit speaks to us. That is where we learn and grow. So let's uh, close off with a word of prayer. And thank you again so much for coming up all the way from Melbourne to bless us. And we hope you come back and worship with us again sometime. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for your blessing in expanding to us the incredible um, information that we are beginning to gather through science as to how intimately involved our brains are with how we eat and sleep and think and just how we take care of ourselves. Lord, I pray that you will bless every person going out of this room today with an increased desire to pump up the plant foods, whole foods, and to let go of some of those things that are interfering with our general health and our relationship with you. Thank you for our bodies, which are so fearfully and wonderfully made. And bless us now as we go out to the, enjoy the rest of the Sabbath and return later this evening. I think it's at 730 for our business meeting. And may you be with us through that as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So enjoy the afternoon, 730. Keep your brain clear. Go get some exercise. We've got decisions to make. <laughs>